Hi gang, and welcome to another Army Profile and another KR case I've dug out of storage. This time we're looking at my Imperial Fleet for Battlefleet Gothic. This army isn't as old as you might think. For some reason back in 2015 we got really into the idea of playing some Battlefleet Gothic, a game I never played the first time around. So I managed to assemble this weird collection of miniatures through a big trade with someone at my local club and through the usual way of buying loads of battered old models on eBay. Prices were steep but not quite as ridiculous as they are now. I went with Imperial because that's what was offered, Gary went with Orcs and later Tau, but I think we only ever managed to play three or four games in total. It's a really fun game, but we bought so many models that every game was also a really long game, none of us wanted to just play with a couple of ships. Anyway, I'd like to try it again, maybe digging this box out will force me to do that, and I'm also hoping I'll get to break them out when our Club Siege of Vrax campaign gets to that point. The Imperial Fleet was one of the standard two fleets that came in the original box set of Battlefleet Gothic, which contained forces for Imperial and Chaos. However, the box set only included two sculpts, one plastic ship for each faction, and the Imperials was this standard Imperial cruiser. The ships came with various plastic side parts that could be fitted to configure the model into different classes. I have a fair few of those models, but other than the plastic cruiser, everything else in the army is solid metal, which is fine for the escorts, but it makes keeping some of the larger ships on their bases a little difficult. I've also chopped the flying stems on these to various heights. Battlefleet Gothic is very much a 2D game. It's more like a naval combat game than a space battle, but I wanted to look like my squadrons were at vaguely different positions and it has no effect on the overall game. So let's look at the models in the fleet. We'll start with the smallest ships, the Escorts. This fleet is protected by three squadrons of Cobra Destroyers, the smallest warships available in the Imperial fleet and some of the fastest, armed only with huge anti-warship torpedo tubes. Every Imperial fleet had a couple of squadrons of these, they're disposable but they pack quite a punch. The old Cobra models had slight variations between them, they came in mostly three different variants and I've got enough for a squadron of each of them, so nine Cobras in total. The next step up from them are the Sword Frigates. These are slightly bigger, more well-rounded escort ships armed with short-range weapon batteries. And this is where they start to look a lot more like what you expect an Imperial ship to look like, with the long armoured prow. I have enough for two squadrons, and though they look really similar, there are actually tiny variations between the sculpts, little differences in the bridge or antennae arrangements that make them look like different ships. They're also the first ships that aren't completely dwarfed by their own flying stems. That gives me 15 escort models in total, and then we start to move towards cruisers. But before we get fully there, we get to these guys, the Dauntless Light Cruisers, which are somewhere between an escort and a full-size cruiser role. Like the smaller ships, these are single-piece metal models. The Dauntless is like a reconnaissance cruiser, and I have a squadron of the original loadout. They're equipped with side weapons batteries, those are the little rows of squares, and these long prow-mounted lances. They also came in a slightly different variant with the lances replaced by torpedo tubes, and I've got a squadron of those as well. I really like these models. They retain a lot of the classic design of Imperial ships, but there's something really sleek about them, and they're probably my favorite models in the army. Anyway, from there we go on to the full-size cruisers, and all of these are variants of that one plastic kit from the original box set. While I'd like to say I built these with, I don't know, some strategy in mind, mostly they're based on what bits I happen to have. First up are two Tyrant class cruisers, which are armed with the prow torpedo tubes that most of these cruisers have, plus two banks of weapons batteries down each side. Weapons batteries are what you use for broadside, so these are big tough ships for shoving right into the enemy lines. The next variant are the opposite of that. These are Gothic class cruisers, as well as the standard prow torpedoes. They're armed entirely with lance arrays. These are long range single shot weapons and on Imperial ships, they're represented by these little turret things. Finally, the last two I built are slightly weirder ones. These are Dictator class, which blends one bank of standard weapons batteries on each side with a bank of launch bays for attack craft. Launch bays are the third standard add-on all these cruisers came with. They allow you to launch swarms of small craft, either bombers or fighters, to go and attack enemy ships. All these six are basically the same model with different side panels, and I've elected to leave off the prow antennae that they're sometimes equipped with, partly because it just looks a bit cleaner, and partly because it makes it easier to tell when a ship does have a prow weapon. 
and you know, partly because I didn't have enough bits. Speaking of prow weapons, let's move on to the battle cruisers. Battle cruisers are up armed variants of the basic cruiser model that you could build using the same plastic cruiser kit, and they would usually serve as your flagship if you didn't have a battleship. I built three of my plastic models as battle cruisers, giving them extended bridges on top so they'd be a bit easier to recognize on the table. First up is this Mars class battle cruiser, an all rounder command ship, which on the surface is equipped with the same armament as the Dictator a bank of weapons batteries and a bank of launch bays. But it also comes with lance arrays down the spine and a fearsome Nova cannon mounted on the prow. The Nova cannon is the big, devastating signature weapon for the Imperial fleet, a really long range template weapon. Next up is this Overlord class battle cruiser. This time it's equipped exactly the same way as a Tyrant class cruiser but with loads and loads of weapons batteries, except the Overlord also has a spine lance array. And then finally, I built myself a Jovian class battle cruiser. This is a bit of a weird one. There's meant to be only one of these built for a different war, and it was released in one of the expansions, but I really like the idea of launch bays and attack craft, so I built myself one anyway. Other than the lances on the spine, yeah, it's just launch bays. Launch bays on both sides. Then we come to the centerpiece of the army, a Victory class battleship. This is a bit of a conversion from the standard battleship model. It's also equipped with a Nova cannon on the front, but other than that, it's entirely lances. Three lance panels on each side. This is a really big lump of metal and it's broken off its flight stand loads of times. I ended up just drilling a bigger hole in the bottom and blue tacking the stand in whenever it actually comes out. This model also has the variant Eagle Prow. You could get a battleship that looked a bit more like all the cruisers as well, but I like this one. It stands out nicely amongst all the rest of the ships. Right, we've gone through the models. Let's look at how I painted them. Like many of my armies, the entire army was painted as one giant batch, every model at once, and using a load of techniques that work better when you're batch painting like this. The models were undercoated with gray primer and then sprayed with a layer of Montana gold copper chrome. This is a highly reflective metallic spray paint from Montana who make art and graffiti paints. I use their sprays on loads of armies. They're acrylic, they have really good coverage. You can swap out the caps to control the paint flow. They're available in hundreds of colours and you can buy them over the counter at loads of art shops in the UK. So they're really worth it if you want to start from a unified base colour quickly and because I paint armies in big batches that's really useful. After the models were covered in copper chrome, I broke out the airbrush and gave them a zenithal highlight with Vallejo Model Air Gold, which is a kind of yellowy antique gold colour just hitting all the tops. Then all the prows got masked off with masking tape, painted red, and then airbrushed with various sorts of orange or rust colour to create that gradient. Next step is the bit I hate, brush painting. I painted in the edges of the prows gold and then finished the overall gold look by giving all the ships a quick dry brush of the same gold mixed with a little bit of silver. Finally, I went through and painted all the engines and weapons barrels Vallejo Game Air Gunmetal. The entire army was then coated with Vallejo Spray Gloss Varnish and left to dry for a couple of days and then given an all over oil wash made with lamp black oil paint and white spirit. Once the white spirit had evaporated, I then went back through the army and removed any wash from raised areas instead of doing proper highlights. You can do this with cosmetic tips, which are little bits of foam on the end of sticks. I think a lot of people use cotton buds for this sort of thing, but they're really spiky little models, and I think you just end up with strands of cotton everywhere. Finally, all the bases were painted black and the whole army was sealed with Army Painter Anti-Shine Matte Varnish Spray. And there we are, done. I haven't really got to use this army as much as I planned to, and getting them all out on the table has made me realise that. Like many of my armies, they're very much painted just to a tabletop standard, and the unified colour scheme is what makes it look pretty good across the table. The last time I think these were used in anger it was against the Tau fleet, maybe three or four years ago. Maybe it's time to dig out the order dice and let them loose on the space mat again. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this dive back to the early 2000s. If you want to help fund more tragically underused armies that sit in boxes, then click some buttons, go visit my Patreon, which is a, a thing I have now, or you know, all the other stuff people on YouTube tell you to do. See you next time.